It's mystery. We're in Glastonbury. And on today's show... What is strange about this normal-looking village in Dorset? And what unearthly event single-handedly catapulted an entire city into darkness? And I'm Steve. And today mystery comes to you from the very centre of myth and legend. This is Glastonbury, home of the weird and wonderful. Things like King Arthur, fairy kings and this magic tree. Is it really magic? Well, yeah, it's, it's very, very rare and it's said to bring you good luck and make your wishes come true if you tie a ribbon to it. Seriously? Well, that's wicked because I've got a ribbon here. Hmm. I uh, bet she's wishing for chocolate. Steve, yeah. tell us a joke, mate. Okay. How many... What did the... Fantastic, it's worked. No way, this must be the weirdest town in Britain. Well, if this is the weirdest town, then I've been to the weirdest village. Check this out. Mrs Jones had been driving through the Dorset countryside for several hours and was well and truly lost. She saw Tynan Village coming up and decided to stop and ask for directions. Mrs Jones got out of her car and went to look for someone to help her. She saw the local church ahead and went inside. Is there anybody there? But there was no answer, so Mrs. Jones went to look somewhere else. She was stunned to find the old telephone system still in use. I thought these old phones weren't used anymore. She picked up the receiver, but there was no tone. The phone line was dead. Mrs Jones noticed the village school nearby and was confident she'd find someone in there. As she went into the school, she noticed that all of the children's coat pegs were empty. The children's work was still on their desks, but the room was deserted. And what Mrs. Jones saw was not a classroom from the 21st century. She noticed the pictures of King George and Queen Victoria hanging on the walls. My goodness! The style of the desks, the inkwells, the old books on the shelves, everything reminded her of a Victorian classroom. But it couldn't be. It was as if the world had stood still and that Mrs. Jones had somehow travelled back in time. And then she noticed that the clock had stopped. Right, I think I've got it. Time warp. It's got to be. How else are you going to explain the picture of Queen Victoria? Look, that's just plain ridiculous. Just let me explain. I've got it. What it Look, was. If it's another one of your alien abduction theories, I really don't want to hear it. Look, Steve, let me put you out of your misery. Have a look at this. The answer to the mystery lies in wartime Britain. Tynan Village is near to an army base, and the villagers knew that the threat of the Second World War meant that one day they would have to leave their village. Please excuse the intrusion, Miss Oldfield. I'm afraid that's the end of school for today. You're all going to have to leave the village as part of the evacuation. Come along then, children. Put your things down. We'll all go inside. There you go. Hang on a minute. If they were only evacuated, how come there was no one there when Mrs Jones went back 50 years later? Aha. Uh -huh. I'm glad you asked me that. 
After the war, the village was kept as a reminder to people of what wartime Britain was like. Now it's used as an exhibition and attracts visitors searching for a slice of the past. So there you have it. Mystery solved. <laughs> You know what, Shiara? Glastonbury's got more mysteries than I've had hot dinners. Well, we know that's not true, Steve, OK? Because everybody knows how much you like your hot dinners. Oi, cheeky. All right, I've got a challenge for you. Let's find out who's found out the most mysterious facts about Glastonbury. Deal. Let's go. Without a doubt, I have found the most magical place in Glastonbury. This is the Chalice Well Gardens, and this spring is known locally as the Blood Spring. And that's a really good name for it because the water appears to run red. OK, Clever Clogs, why does the water appear to run red? Well, there are many theories, but the most gruesome one is that it's coloured by blood. Mm, a more sensible theory is that it's actually coloured by natural metals in the water. A more sensible but extremely boring. I much prefer my explanation. The water is also supposed to have magical healing properties and is said to be good to bathe in, so it's a good job you didn't find it. She spends ages in the bath. Well, people don't just bathe in this water, Steve. They also drink it. So I've got one I made earlier. OK. Oh, that tastes worse than one of your cups of tea. Come on, show me what your next mystical fact is. Steve, I really think I'm going to win this challenge. Come on, keep up, because I'm about to show you the most mysterious place in Glastonbury. This is Glastonbury Tour, steeped in mysterious stories and folklore. There's a lot of stories about this weird cone-shaped hill. Some say it's a magic mountain and that underneath there's strange passageways and weird tunnels. They say that if you enter them, you either come out insane or you don't come out at all. And not only that, it was also thought to be the home of the fairy King Gwyn and all the fairy folk. And here at the top are the remains of St. Michael's Tower, thought to be about 700 years old. It was rebuilt after the original was destroyed in an earthquake many miles away. But to be honest, Steve, I don't think you're going to find anywhere as mystical or magical as this in the whole of Glastonbury. Yeah, well done, Shara. You win, but listen, I've got to go. Why? I'm not finished yet. I think I drank a bit too much of that water. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jenny Sampson and I live in Wimborne, Dorset, and something really strange happened to me. Last year on the 12th of April, my cat Felicity died after being unwell. I was very sad, but I knew that she wasn't sick anymore and it made me feel much better. The following night, I went upstairs to bed and started to fall asleep. I felt a cat jumping on the end of my bed, but I didn't think anything of it. I started to go back to sleep when I remembered that my cat had died the day before. The only explanation I can think of is that I had seen the ghost of Flitty. I wasn't scared at all and went back to sleep. Exactly one year later, on the 12th of April, the same day Flitty had died, something else strange happened to me. It was the middle of the night when I was asleep. I was suddenly woken up by a strange clawing noise coming from my blow-up chair. I sat up and looked over thinking that it must have been our other cat Pippin scratching at my chair. I shouted out Pippin and the cat simply disappeared. It was then that I realised that I hadn't seen Pippin at all. The cat I had seen looked exactly like Flissy. She had come back to visit me the same day as she had done last year. I know it sounds strange, but I believe that Flissy has come back as a ghost to keep me company and to let me know that she was all right. I wonder if she'll come back again next year. <laughs> Wow, that was really spooky. Steve, now that you're back, what exactly are you doing? What does it look like? I'm taking photos. But why are you taking pictures of the sky when there's all this beautiful countryside? Because, Shiara, you never know what you might see, especially here. Well, I think I could make a pretty good guess, like at uh, planes or birds uh, or... If you knew as much about this tour as you say you do, you'd know exactly what I'm looking for. Tell you what, while I'm busy, have a look at this. John Tyrrell, 
plant manager at the city electricity station had just left work. It had been a hectic day, but he was satisfied that all was in order. He was looking forward to a nice cup of tea when his phone rang. Hello. Hi, John. Malcolm here. I'm going to need you to come back into work. Well, what's up? We've got an emergency. I've just come up from the main generating plant and there's an unusual flow of current to the north. I've got seven dials all going berserk. Right, I'll be right there. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Chris and Zandra Newport were enjoying a romantic meal. Did you enjoy that? Yes. Lovely, darling. I hope you've got room for some Black Forest Gatto. <laughs> Go on, then. Just a little bit. <laughs> of jobs may be lost as a mine head company announced it's going into and whilst the Newports were tucking into their desserts Russ James was over the other side of the city presenting the evening program for Western Counties Radio in record time and although she's 66 years young she insists she's fitter than she's ever been and won't be giving up just yet you're up to date with the news and sport I'm Russ James Okay, Steve, let's get this straight, right? A bunch of people are going about their everyday lives doing everyday things. They sure are. So where's the mystery in that, then? Well, unbeknownst to the people of the city, the situation at the electricity station was going from bad to worse. Everything seemed normal when at 6.57, the lights went out. Oh, no, a power cut. Or at least we won't have to find any candles. Studios and at the same time at the radio station, the evening programme came to an abrupt end. You're listening to Western Counties Radio and here's a special birthday tune for John Lavelle in Bristol. And that was just the start of the chaos. Within seconds, the entire city had been plummeted into darkness. Meanwhile, photography student Jason Robinson was taking photos for his coursework. With special permission, he was shooting in the electricity station when he noticed something incredibly strange. He stopped dead in his tracks, stared in disbelief, and then took a photograph. The next day at college, Jason developed his pictures. These are absolutely amazing. So what was on the photo then? You're never going to believe it. Try me. OK. This. <gasps> never. Yep, Jason had photographed a UFO. And what's even more amazing is that many people blamed it for all the mysterious blackouts in the city. How come? Well, over the years, there's been loads of reports of mysterious power cuts, and some say it's because of alien interest in Earth's electricity. Well, I don't know what caused the blackouts, but I reckon it was some kind of weird coincidence. Because I don't really think it could have been a UFO, Steve. Yeah, but what about the photo? Wasn't that evidence enough for you? No, it could have been like a smudge on the lens or some kind of interference. Well, you know what I say? The camera never lies. Mm. Well, I believe it. <laughs> so what you're telling me is that you're actually looking for UFOs? That's right, Shiara. There's been a lot of UFO sightings around Glastonbury Tor. It's seen as a strong energy point and attracts a lot of extraterrestrial attention. Come on, Steve. I think the altitude's getting to you. Yes. Yes, we should go before they abduct us. That's right, Steve. We'll see you soon for some more mystery. Say goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Steve. Oh, it's going to be a long walk down. They're coming, you know. Yeah. On our next show, is this really the scariest castle in Ireland? And what mystery could be inside this crate that would cause chaos and confusion in a car park? 